Well, hey guys, it's uh, Thorzax here, and uh, I got a um, I got a uh, deal on Messenger uh, from one of my subscribers, and uh, he was talking about the the Ruger Super Blackhawk Bisley, and he, what he has is he has a standard Super Blackhawk, you know, with the you know with the plow type handle and you know grip on it and all that and what he wants to do is do a conversion to the uh, Bisley grip okay and there's a few things I wanted to go about with the uh, Bisley grip with my viewers the things that I've experienced okay in shooting the Bisley first of all the Bisley grip is a target grip okay and it it sets in your hand in a way so you're not at an angle like this anymore. You're you're kind of straight on with it, and that's more of a, a target type stance with your hand. You know, getting straight on in the grip. Uh, another thing, um, when you shoot full magnum loads with your grip like this on the pistol, it's going to kick. It's going to kick a lot harder than one that has a uh, a plow. Uh, grip on it. The plow grip gives a little bit and it allows the gun to kind of you know roll back in your hand a little bit uh, when under recoil. So that was something that I wanted to kind of you know uh, cover. Now the business grip to me is unique in its design and it, it to me you know it, it's more appealing than the plow you know uh, grip. It just it just looks better to me. I, I like it. I also like the hammer, you know, the style of the hammer and that sort of thing. You know, it just, just, it looks like a target pistol. Uh, as far as customization goes on the, the Ruger Bisleys, um, you know, you can talk to the guys down there at Clark, um, you know, and, and see what's available. Uh, I know that Bowen. Now Bowen is very pricey. I will say that much. They they do great work. Their their work is top notch. Um, you know I, I don't think you can get a better uh, company out there for customization than Bowen to work on your Bisley. I mean if you really want to shim it up and you want to take all the slop out of it and you want you know a match pistol made, then by all means send it to. Uh, Bowen Gunworks, and they will, they will, they will flat stand behind it too. I shot, I had a Bowen pistol at one time, and I kicked myself for for, for selling that thing. That thing was very accurate, great gun. I, I loved it. I mean, uh, for handgun silhouette, like I said, you know, I I shot Rams at 200 meters with that gun, knocked them over. You know, I mean, as long as I did my part. Uh, I could do it, you know, and it was, it, I'm telling you what, when you're shooting that far away um, with a pistol, you need all the advantages that you can get in the way of the tightness and the way the gun functions and fires. Um, hmm. There's there's lots of little things that they can do to the gun. First of all, the trigger job, changing out the mainspring uh, for the hammer. Um, you know your trigger return spring. They need to tune that. They also need to go ahead and grind and regrind your uh, your sir angles. You know, um, there's uh, a shim kit that they put into the uh, into the takedown pin. You know, uh, on the cylinder side, they shim that up both forward and back on on the wheel, and you know so it doesn't have any slop or anything like that. And then what they do is they custom grind a paw for your cylinder stop and that custom grind depending on whether or not this cylinder is serviceable they will uh, they will go ahead and custom grind a paw so there is no slop whatsoever and what they'll also do is they will shim this so that the cylinder gra gap is is like two thousandths three thousandths at the most they'll also regrind the forcing cone, they'll polish out the barrel um, and lap it. Uh, they will um, install new, you know, new sights 
in the whole nine yards. And when you get done with it, it it's no longer really a Ruger anymore. It's 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 a custom gun, and it's just built off of a Ruger frame. Um, but you know, I'll tell you what, pound for pound. Now, granted, I'm a Smith guy. You know, I I, I like Smith and Wessons uh, because of their tightness and tolerances and, and and the ergonomics and the elegance and you know the craftsmanship that goes into you know crafting them and that sort of thing um, Ruger though has the advantage in the way of the bulk okay this gun is one tough gun I mean it will flat hold up you know uh, under some very punishing loads and uh, you know you just can't beat the strength in a, in, a, in, in a Ruger I mean you just you just can't be, beat it but you it's a trade-off you know it really is it's a trade-off uh, you know you're giving up the elegance and you're giving up the the frills and and all that uh, you know for brawn and strength uh, but they are accurate you know I mean they are an accurate pistol now, this pistol, make sure it's unloaded, okay, okay, we're, we're unloaded, there is nothing in there. This pistol here, the only thing that I've done to this gun is put a trigger job on it, that's it. You know, it is a very light trigger. You know, um... That's the way I like a trigger to react. Very little movement. I'm on the sear. I can feel the sear. And all I have to do is just keep pressing as I'm aligning the sights all in one, you know, all in one thing, you know. Aligning the sights and pressing the trigger at the same time. Boom. Gun goes off. So anyway, um, the reason why I put this video out, maybe just a little food for thought for anybody that wants to go ahead and customize uh, a Ruger, or if you know you want a good duty gun, something that that you can load some pretty punishing loads for, or do any load development or anything like that. You know you can't beat a Ruger. A Ruger is uh, a very tough gun. Um, not as elegant as the Smith, not as tuned as the Smith, not as refined. I would believe as the Smith. Maybe those are the right words that I'm going for. But the, 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 you know, out of the box. Um, however, you know, it's accurate. It's accurate as it needs to be. Great hunting gun. Uh, with a little work, you can make them into match guns. And, you know, I mean, there you go. You know? So anyway, uh, I want to go ahead and close this video and get it uploaded. Um, I hope you guys are, you know, uh, Fouling along, I guess, with the uh, with the recent news on YouTube. Um, well, re recent news about YouTube. Uh, I don't really don't know what to say about it all, so I'm just not even going to comment. Um, I've gotten comments, you know, from some of my viewers and stuff, you know, about talking about it. But I have to agree, I guess, with uh, loads of bacon. You know, we're kind of on rented land, okay? We're allowed to build on, re you know, rented land here. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not really the landlords. So, you know, I mean, we can get mad about it, but what's that going to do? I mean, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the video space and the media actually belongs to YouTube and we're just allowed to load our videos on there for you know our, our purposes and, and believe me I look, at it, I look at it this way I've never instructed anyone to do anything that I have done on my channels okay this has only been for uh, this is my experience this is what I've done this is uh, you know th these are the results I've got from me you know I, I, I've never really pushed any of uh, my loading techniques or instructed anyone on, you know, reloading and that sort of thing or any type of gunsmithing or stuff like that. You know, um, there's a lot of liability there. And I don't want to see anybody, you know, get hurt or anything like that. You know, I can't guarantee, you know, who's out there, you know, watching my video, you know, whether or not they're a big fat idiot or something, you know. 
So, uh, so there you go. That's kind of my feelings on it, you know. Um, if they cut the gun channels, well, you know, um, well, that's the way it goes, guys. You know, I, mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, I don't know what else to say about it. There's not really much we can do about it. You know, we can get torches out. We can get the pitchforks out. But it ain't going to do any good. I mean, uh, you know, YouTube belongs to YouTube. So, anyway, that's my take on it. Maybe that's kind of a defeated outlook. But uh, at the same time, you know, we got to remember we're on rented land. You know, and, and, and our landlord is allowing us to do this for free. And I never once ever, you know, looked at YouTube as a source of income for me. I mean, in the two and a half years that I've made videos, I think I've made less than 50 bucks on, you know, monitor, you know monetary uh, ads and things like that. I, I haven't made hardly anything, you know, on, on YouTube. So it's not really a source of income for me. It's just something that I like to do. So, anyway, that's my take on it. So, I'll be talking to you guys in the next video. So, and when that will be, I don't know. I, I need to get out to the range and get some more range time in. So, uh, I've been working on the double powder coated thing. I've been with a 44, with a 200 grain. I want to go ahead and do some 240 grain. I want to go ahead and do some uh, of the 240 grain uh, silhouette bullets. Try some of those with powder coat and lube. Um, I've tried the powder coat, straight powder coat, out of the uh, out of this gun, and it, it shot okay. I think it. I think that the traditionally lubed bullets shoot a little bit better than the powder coated ones because you know you're, you're looking at jacket thickness and and things like that. But you know, for all intents and purposes. I mean, I mean, they shoot as accurate as needed to be with, with, with you know, with pistol ranges. Um, one thing I real, you know, say that I've seen that a lot of the new guys and a lot of the older guys, for that matter, they've been doing uh, is pushing their target out farther, pushing the target out farther. You know, the flash lean, you know, the, the flash, uh, flashlight effect on the angles of the front sight and the relationship to the rear sight, um, you know, is amplified at range. And so, you know, if you fire a shot, say at 15 yards, and you shoot accurately enough to hit the X ring or, you know, hit hit the 10 ring, <coughs> at further distance, that might be on the 9 or the 8 ring. You know, so you when you push it out further, okay, Keep that out of your mind that it's further away. It, it, you know, keep that pressure off your mind that you're making a longer shot. And just keep it in your mind that, hey, if you can shoot in the X-ring at 15 yards, you can shoot in the X-ring at 50 yards. Distance doesn't matter. It's the alignment of the sight, okay, and squeezing the trigger and allowing the gun to fire under precise sight alignment is what's going to make it shoot in the X-ring at 50 yards if the gun is capable of doing that sort of accuracy in the first place you know like a match gun or something like that but you know I mean you should be able to put them into the 10 ring or the 9 ring at 50 yards I would think so um, you know just a little challenge I, I, I like it when I see people challenging themselves with their with, with their firearms you know and, 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 and trying to get the most out of them I mean you know that's great that's what this is all about and like I said if you can make that shot at 50 yards well Shooting at 15 yards is nothing. I mean, <laughs> it really is nothing, man. It's 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 piece of cake, you know. Uh, so there you go, man. That's my thoughts on it. I'll tell you what. I'll talk to you guys later, and I'll see you in the next video.